Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, we want to specially welcome you to this week's episode of GLOAM Podcast, the official podcast channel of Global Emancipation Ministries, Calgary, Canada. Our mandate is liberating men through the knowledge of the truth and that's what the Lord will be doing through the episode you will be listening to shortly. We will like you to subscribe to this GLOAM podcast channel on Anchor, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Overcast, Breaker, Radio Public, Pocket Casts, and other listening platforms accessible to you in order to keep receiving fresh episodes as they become available. That way you will not miss out on any revelation the Lord may be bringing your way through this channel. Please kindly subscribe, share the links and encourage your friends and family to subscribe as well. To learn more about this ministry, kindly visit our website at www.glome.org, and also remember to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn among others, and stay connected to keep abreast of important spiritual updates as they become available. May the Lord bless you mightily as you do all these in Jesus' name. Now the hour has come to be blessed again. Stay tuned and open your heart as our president, Anthony Adifarakan brings God's word to us from the throne of grace. Be blessed as you listen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we give you glory, honor, and adoration for the privilege given to us to be among the living. Thanks for your faithfulness. Thanks for your loving kindness. Thanks for all the things you've done for us in time past. And thanks for what you're doing now and what you're going to do. Lord, be exalted in Jesus' name. Now we have come to learn at your feet again. We pray that you give us fresh insight into your word. We pray that you give us understanding of scriptures in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much for always answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Uh, This is another week that the Lord has blessed us with and we're going to be considering uh, the second part of Philip the Evangelist. You know, last week we considered uh, Philip the Evangelist part one and we we actually considered two outlines under that uh, topic. We we got to know Philip's and we also consider the exploits of Philip. So this week we are going to be taking the last two outlines uh, under this uh, subject, under this topic. So if you like, you can call this Philip the Evangelist Part 2 and we're going to be taking the last two outlines under it. Okay, but before we do that, let's take our text quickly. Uh, Let's take our text from Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 and we take verse 26 to 29. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, we take 26 to 29. I'm going to be reading from King James Version. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a new knock of great authority on that uh, Candace queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. The Lord bless his words in the heart in Jesus' name. Uh, the third outline which happens to be first outline for this week is the secrets of philip's exploit you know last week we considered the exploits we mentioned some of the things he did some of the things god helped him to do especially in samaria you know he went there you know brought the gospel to them there was joined the entire city you know uh, demons were crying out of people he he, he glorified god god did some wonderful things uh, through uh, philip and as a matter of fact he brought joy to the entire city of Samaria. But we want to look at what actually are the secrets of this exploit. What, what were the factors responsible? What are the factors responsible for the exploits he was able to generate? What, what, what are the underlying factors? What gave birth you know, to these exploits? We already considered. And that's why we're calling this outline the secrets of Philip's exploits. And number one. Philip maintained his relationship with God. The very number one secret is Philip maintained his relationship with God. 
You can read Acts chapter 6, verse 3 to 6, Acts 8, 26, 29, and 39. You can read Acts 6, 3 to 6, Acts 8, 26, 29, and 39. He did not have any broken relationship with God. He, the relationship was solid. He maintained his relationship with God. Secondly, Philip maintained his relationship with the spiritual authorities, the elders and the faith. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 verse 14 and uh, to 17 and verse 25. Acts chapter 8 14 to 17 and 25. Philip maintained his relationship with God. He maintained his relationship with his spiritual authority. That's his spiritual mentors. He was always at, at every given time. He was always in touch. I know God is the author of miracles. So when you're in contact with God, when you're in relationship with God, you can be sure you're in relationship with miracles and exploits. So he maintained his relationship with God. He maintained his relationship with the spiritual authorities. Thirdly, Philip forgave his persecutor. Who happened to be Apostle Paul. You know, initially was Saul of Tarsus. But after conversion, Saul of Tarsus became Apostle Paul. Philip forgave him. His persecutor. Acts 21.8 Acts 21 8. The very man who frustrated life for them, who made their lives frustrated, who made sure everything was going against the Christians, the persecutor, Philip decided to forgive. You can read Acts 21 verse 8. Acts 21 verse 8 for that. And if you look at number 4, I mean, for number 4, uh, Philip stayed in his calling as an evangelist. Philip stayed in his calling as an evangelist. And uh, one more point I should mention to you under the fact that, uh, considering the fact that Philip forgave his persecutor, Philip actually accommodated his persecutor. One of the signs, one of the signs of forgiveness is if when you begin to practice hospitality to the one who was persecuting you before, not praying for his downfall, Philip you know, accommodated Paul and his traveling companions. You know, they ate, everything was fine because he had forgiven the, uh, forgiven the man and he had moved on. So, Philip forgets persecutor. It's important. That's why Jesus Christ, you know, in his teachings, if your enemy is hungry, give them food. As far as Philip was concerned, Apostle Paul has become a brother, not longer a persecutor. He was able to let go of the past and embrace the present. He refused to let his, uh, his pain from the past, you know, adversely affect his judgment in the present. You want to learn that. You want to learn that. So Philip stayed in his calling as an evangelist, Acts 21.8. He did not aspire or lobby to become an apostle. Ephesians 4.11-13. He did not aspire or lobby or just press on buttons so that he could become an apostle. He stayed in his calling. And like I said the last time, he was not only staying, he was actually shining. The only light in Samaria and it shines so bright that the entire city became joyful. Hallelujah to Jesus. So he stayed in his calling. Stay in your calling. Don't aspire to be what the Lord has not asked you to be. The Lord has called you to be an instrumentalist. Don't go and look for one suit and one big Bible say you must be a bishop. No. You stay in your calling. Stay where God has called you. Stay where the Lord wants to use you. Stay in your calling. Okay? Being an apostle would have been very nice. He didn't lobby. He didn't, he didn't even make efforts to become one. He just stayed in his calling, glorifying God all the way. Um, number five, Philip never preached church. And this is important, take note. Philip never preached church. He never preached denomination. He never preached human ideas, philosophy, psychology, etc. Everywhere he went, he only preached Christ, the Word. Acts 8, 5, uh, 5 comma 35. He never preached human ideas and philosophy. He never preached something that people wanted to hear, nice messages. He preached the counsel of God. He just preached Christ. Christ, the word of God. And that's the greatest secret of his exploits. Acts 8, 5 and 35. He preached Christ. He preached Christ. 
you know, there are some there are some of us when we uh, and I've seen this happen. I've seen it happen. There are some of us when uh, when we when they say it's time for evangelism, maybe your church. Uh, they say, okay, we are meeting on Saturday. Uh, we're going out for evangelism and all those kind of things. They give you materials. They tell you what to do. Uh, I've seen situations where during evangelism, all some people tell sinners, the people they are trying to win to Jesus, all they tell them is come to our church. That's all. That's the only message they have. Come to our church. That's their own evangelism. Our church has this, our church has that. We have this program for women. We have another one for men. In fact, we have another one for finances. There's another program for health. There's one for marriage. There's no situation of life that our church does not have program for. Please come to our church. Is that evangelism? Can your church save? Don't you know that it's only Jesus who saves? That is not evangelism. Or some people talk down on some church denominations. Oh, no, those ones. No, 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 no. They don't know what they are doing. Come to our own. You talk down on one. You magnify your own. You know. Or maybe even the person you are supposed to talk to about Jesus. You end, you end up talking about sports. You end up talking about politics or probably the weather. You are supposed to be winning this soul. But eventually. So, you, you, Philip was not like that. Philip was not like that. Philip preached Christ. He didn't preach his own opinion. He didn't preach what he felt like preaching. He didn't preach uh, psychology. He didn't preach one nice philosophy. He didn't preach anything else but Christ. And when you preach Christ, Christ manifests himself. As 8, 5 and 35. And that's the greatest secret of his exploits. When you preach Christ, if you don't believe me, start doing it. When Christ becomes the focus of your message, exploits will follow. These signs shall follow those who believe in my name. You begin to preach the one in whom you have believed. You begin to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified, nothing else. No, no cajoling or trying to bamboozle people. No, you preach Christ. Christ, simple Christ. And you don't need to remove your shirt and begin to fight or begin to... Christ, you don't need to defend Christ. I put it to you. Jesus Christ only wants to be introduced. He doesn't want to be defended. Defending him is an insult to him. He can defend himself. He can prove himself. He can manifest. He can. If somebody say he does not, if he, he does not know something, but Jesus has the capacity to defend himself. Or Jesus. That's why I say you will be witnesses unto me. What's the job of a witness? I saw this. I heard this. Say it the way you know it, and go. Have you ever seen any witness in the court judging a case? There is something they call the witness box. They put you there. What do you know about this case? Okay, I saw this man. I saw another man. I saw this woman was wearing red. The man was wearing black. This is everything. Yes. Thank you. You step down. You're done. Leave the argument to the lawyers and leave the verdict to the judge. God is the judge. Jesus is the advocate. Your job is to witness. Introduce. That's all. Preach Jesus. Preach the word. You are a pastor where every Sunday out of 30 to 40 minutes as assigned for your sermon. About 30 or probably in fact 85 to 90% of it is your opinion. What you feel. Your view. Some even hardly open the Bible. You just keep talking. What sermon do you have when the Bible is not open? You preach the word. You see that's why when I present this podcast I keep adding scripture so that you can you can go I, you know i tell people when we do a uh online bible study when questions are asked i tell them i don't have an opinion my opinion is not necessary it doesn't matter there's only one opinion that matters the word whatever the word of god says that's my opinion that's all you may not like it but that's it the whatever is written is what is said to the opinion is not said to only the word of God is said to the devil. Hallelujah. So Philip preached Jesus Christ only. And signs and wonders followed. Testimonies followed. The entire city 
became joyful. Samaria, stop preaching your church denomination. Stop preaching human ideas. Stop preaching the weather reports. We have mob- we have apps on our phones to check weather. You don't preach that to us. Preach Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus. That's very important. Now, we go to the other outline. The last outline under this uh, Philip the Evangelist. We're looking at Philip's family life. Philip's family life. And it's equally important. You can learn some things from there. Number one, Philip eventually settled down in Caesarea where he raised a family. Philip had a family. Check Acts 21 verse 8. Philip had a family. He was responsible in church and he was responsible at home. Philip had a family. He raised a family. Number two, he raised his children in the ways of God and even ensured their Holy Ghost baptism. This man raised his children in the ways of the Lord and ensured they even received the Holy Ghost. Proverbs 22 verse 6, Proverbs 22 verse 6, you should train a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Not in the way you want him to go. Train. You know I said the word of God is the only opinion you should have. Basically, raise your children according to the word of the Lord. According to the word of the Lord. For instance, if you read Proverbs very well, you will keep saying how to raise children there. And that's written by the wisest man that ever lived during his time, Solomon. He said, if you leave children to themselves without correcting them, they will bring you shame. The scriptures cannot be broken. They will bring you shame. They will bring you serious shame. Either now or later in life. They will bring you shame. Your child is doing something wrong. You do you, you are not correcting. In fact, somebody is trying to correct your child. Say, no, 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 leave him, my leave my child. Don't correct my child. What, what's your problem? Is it your child? You leave, you know, you let him do his thing. He's just a kid, right? He's just a kid. He doesn't know anything. You know, three years, four years, five years, six years, he's just a kid. Okay? He's just a kid. Whatever he does is just a kid. No problem. By the time he, he or she brings you serious, massive disgrace and shame in your lifetime, you will understand that it's not just a kid. The word of God said, don't leave your children without correction. Correct them. In fact, there's a place he said, spank them. They will not die. It's there. He said, foolishness is bound in the heart of children, but the rod of correction will drive you far away from them. That is in your Bible. Ah, but I'm in a culture, I'm in a situation where I cannot uh, talk to my children. I'm in a community, I'm in a country, I'm in one place where nobody talks to children. Really? No problem. In that same community, when your shame arrives, they will join you. They will see the shame. Because when the word of God does not know your community. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. You have children? Correct them. Train them in the ways of the Lord. That's the only time they can give you rest. You don't do that, you will not have rest over these children. It's not a curse. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. I told you I don't have an opinion. It's written. Philip raised his children in the ways of the Lord. Four daughters. He had four daughters. And at the time, uh, at the time the scripture documented it, if you read Acts, Acts chapter 21, verse 9, he had four daughters and they were unmarried at the time, and they were all virgins. Virgins. Four daughters, virgins, pure, undefined. And they all prophesied. Four daughters, virgin, all prophesied, full of the Holy Ghost. How many of your children are even born again, let alone full of the Holy Ghost? How many of your children follow you to church? On Sunday morning, you get in the car, daddy and mommy off to church, children, basketball training, you know, movie, theater, you know, we'll see later in the day. Really? Really? You leave these children to their to themselves, they will bring you shame. Because God cannot lie, it's written. He had four daughters and they all prophesied. Your children are your responsibility. God is depending on you to raise them in, in, in the right way so that he can fulfill his plans and purposes concerning their lives. God wants you to use your children for his glory. Don't deny them that destiny. 
don't. And you know you cannot give what you don't have. If you are not responsible as a parent, how can you raise responsible children? You see what I'm saying? So you, you have to take charge of your life. You have to take charge of your life. You are not responsible. How can you raise responsible children? How? You can't give what you don't have. And if you are not raising these responsible children, you are failing God. The God who gave them to you because the Bible says, children are the heritage of the Lord. Children are not just product of sperm and ovary. No, they are the heritage of the Lord. God is very serious when it comes to children. He doesn't joke with it. Remember Jesus was saying, if you make one child to, you know, to stumble, Jesus said, it's better for you not to have been born, or, or, or worse still, they should put one big, you know, uh, uh, one big stone around your neck and drown you in the water. It's better for you to be drowned than to cause one child to stumble. Is that serious? He said, these children always behold the face of my father in heaven. And these are the children you are, you know, treating this way. And in case you are listening to me, you are a pedophile, you defy children, you abuse children, you, you know, you do all manners of stupid and wrong things with children. Repent. Repent. God does not joke with children. He doesn't. I needed to mention that. So Philip had four daughters. They were all saved. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they all prophesied that spiritual gift and it's my prayer your children will not bring you shame in the mighty name of jesus raise them in the way of the lord introduce them to jesus correct them when they are wrong minister the holy spirit to them show them how to study the bible expose them to meetings like this to bible study take them to church let them understand let them have personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can have rest as parents. Okay? It's my prayer you will not fail over your children in the mighty name of Jesus. And uh, also, his family was hospitable. As I begin to close now, his family was hospitable. We're looking at Philip's family life. You know, his family was hospitable even to former enemies. Acts 21, 8 and 10. He entertained people, entertain strangers, entertain the brethren, even somebody who was once a persecutor, uh, uh, Philip still accommodated and gave them food, took, them, you know, took, them of their, took care of them. Hospitality. The word of God says we should not forget to practice hospitality because people have entertained angels without knowing, just through hospitality. The promise of 25 years in the life of Abraham came to pass via hospitality. He decided to entertain some people. They happened to be angels. And God Almighty himself came down and declared the end to their barrenness. Following year, Sarah had a child. Hospitality. How did Lot escape? How did Lot escape the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah? Hospitality. He entertained angels. And the angels told him, we have to rescue you before we destroy the city. And Lot was rescued hospitality you must learn to be hospitable do not forget to practice hospitality is what the word of god says because through this people have entertained angels without knowing and when you entertain angels blessings come when when you practice hospitality god makes promises of years ago to be fulfilled in your life in a jiffy it's one of the avenues through which he brings to pass what he has promised Hallelujah to Jesus. Philip's family life. See, Philip was a wonderful man of God and his life is worth emulating. We, we should learn from him. You know, his family life, his approach to ministry, his exploits is very, very important. I have two probing questions I'm going to leave you with as I begin to close now. Two questions. Why do 21st century preachers preach other messages than Christ crucified? Why do we have preachers in this 21st century that they, own, they are preaching other things? They preach other messages apart from Christ crucified. They preach all manners of things, but they will not preach Christ crucified. Why? I want to think about that. I want to think about that. People, preachers preach 
to be able to get money from the people they are preaching to. Preachers preach to be able to increase the capacity of their congregation. Preachers preach to be able to get their building project completed. How many preachers are still preaching Christ crucified? Christ crucified. How many of how many preachers are still true witnesses? It's food for thought. Think about it. Also, why do ministers' children fail to take after their parents in exhibiting godly lifestyles? Why do we have ministers' children, children of the ministers of God, not taking after their parents in exhibiting godly lifestyles? Parents are godly, children are wayward. Parents are so godly, children are wayward. Why? What's going on? Will it be that we are, that these ministers are neglecting these children? They go to church, they go to Bible study, and they allow the children to go watch movie? Could it be these children are left to themselves? Why do ministers' children fail to take after their parents in exhibiting godly lifestyle? Or could it be that the lives of these parents, do, I mean, the, their life does not even, um, does not symbolize true Christianity? Uh, does it mean they are, these parents are ministers in church, but they are monsters at all? And these children are looking at the parents as hypocrites that how can they go to church and be speaking in tongues but when they get back home they are monsters and they begin to tell themselves this christianity is scam i'm not going to do this could it be could it be that these parents are actually misrepresenting jesus to their children food for thought you want to think about these things and adjust in any area you think you need adjustment i'm leaving you those two questions in summary philip decided for jesus he continued with jesus and introduced his children, his posterity, to Jesus. He balanced ministry and family life. Important. He balanced ministry and family life. He didn't allow family to affect ministry and he did not allow ministry to affect family. Not that you are very busy in church and your family is suffering. No, Philip was balanced. And it's, as such, is worthy of emulation. Hebrews 13, 7 and Hebrews 6, 12. We are advised to follow people like this. And it's my prayer that God will grant us grace, never to bring him disgrace in the name of Jesus. You're going to take this prayer before I lead whoever wants to surrender uh, their life to I mean, their life to Jesus Christ. You're going to say, Father, you are the one who helped Philip in his generation. Say this prayer. Say, Father, you are the one who helped Philip in his generation. This is my own generation. Please help me too your mouth and pray that prayer father you are the one who helped philip in his generation now this is my own generation please help me too and as you pray that prayer the lord who helped philip in his generation will help you in the mighty name of jesus so if you want to surrender your life to jesus christ i'll quickly give the opportunity to do so you want to change from your ways of sin and begin to live for jesus say lord jesus i am a sinner I cannot help myself and that's why I need your salvation. Please come into my life today. Wash away all my sins and set me free from every bondage that sin has attracted into my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior today. Please write my name in the book of life and help me to live for you alone from now onward. Also fill me with your Holy Spirit and don't let me ever become a powerless Christian. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word. Thank you so much for opening our understanding. And thank you for teaching us from the life of Philip the Evangelist. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. You are the one who helped Philip in his generation. This is our time. Please help us too. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for your children who have decided to say bye-bye to a life of sin and to accept Jesus, Lord, wash away their sins. Accept them in the beloved. Write their names in the book of life. And together, help us to see your face in glory. Thank you, Father, for always answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We give glory to God for the revelation of his word. May we receive grace to be doers and not just hearers in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer of salvation, congratulations. You are now born again, you are a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new, praise God. To learn more about this new life in Christ Jesus, please visit our website at www.glome.org for various helpful resources.
We also want to invite you to be part of our weekly online Bible study that holds every Sunday at 5 o'clock to 6 p.m. Mountain Time via Zoom app. Click on the invitation banner on the homepage of our website to join the meeting from wherever you are, it's entirely online. God bless you as you do this in Jesus' name. Thanks so much for listening. Kindly share this episode with others so they too can be blessed, and remember to subscribe to this podcast channel. We will be here again next week for a fresh episode if the Lord has not returned. Until then, keep enjoying your freedom in Christ Jesus. God bless you.